Okay, for my weekend relaxing fun after some candle blowout, it is possible <laughs> under certain conditions. I'm still currently playing. Some, you want some evening snack? Evening snack. Oh yeah. Yeah, all sorts. Yeah, all sorts. This up. Overlord. I thought the next um, uh, experiment, nothing new, nothing new really. Um, okay, flame obsession. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm new. That okay. Oh, sit down. Turn the fan off for a moment. Okay. slightly a bit on the, uh, the mi microphone I forgot to recalibrate the, uh, the level so it's probably gonna um, distort a little bit just wait until the flame starts to move which of course it will under certain under a certain frequency at a certain sound pressure level it, it might do it now if I increased ah and start to see slight fluctuation Yeah, I see the flame. Go lower down. That's 30, far, 30 hertz. The flame's been pushed forward and it due to the air turbulence from the pool. That's 27 hertz. 24 hertz. 22, 20, 19 hertz, 18, 16 hertz, bloody hell, believe it or not. I mean, I can't feel it really much because due to the physicality of the uh, size of this, that's 12.5 hertz, 12 hertz. Oh no, come on. And that, now it's down to about 8.5 hertz and the flame's changing. 
you know. But the flame didn't blow out, obviously due to sound pressure level. Um, oh, <laughs> he's curiously looking. Oh, 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 oh! Do you, you want to see this, sir? That's 14.5 Hertz. I've got my eye on my on my, my server. I see you won't go too near because cats are uh, clever, they're cautious. Aren't you sweetie? Hey. So uh, hang on, let's go up to 22 Hertz. Just increase the sound pressure level up. That's 2 dB up, 3 dB up, 4 dB up. Let's go up in frequency. The phone's really. Yeah. Ah, it's more or less the same distance as it was when, when, um, the engine, but uh, engines on the uh, well, the fabricated sound mix, you know. <laughs> it's not a real sound vibe now, is it? I mean, otherwise, uh, everyone will be totally roasted, charcoaled, and deafened. Well, you wouldn't know about that because you'd be charcoaled, and well, that means toast. <laughs> you wouldn't be stupid enough to be underneath the engine bells now, would you? Um, and you can't take this film literally, you will, you know, whatever bloody so because the physic the physics of something like that is just totally, totally different. But yeah, you can do fun things, you know, for fun, you know, and that's just about is it. Ain't gonna blow you across the room like back to the future. That's a load of nonsense because um has that has that ever been myth busted? Because I mean you're talking about the weight of the person and being blown across a room by something like um, I don't know 15, 15 feet I would say by something looking at you know how it was you know the, the different shots the different cameras filming and then the and then the film editing and then you put all that together boom, 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 it looks like he's blown across the room by 15 foot uh, as well as being slightly lifted off the floor I don't think so. I think you get probably you were just it was scared of living daylights out of you and you would just plainly fall backwards. I don't think you get blown across the room. That is total fake. Um a wind tunnel might do that, you know, something like in that um what was it film? Face off. <clears throat> yeah, I think a wind tunnel, but then you'd have to be really crackers <laughs> to go inside a wind tunnel without ear, you know, got to put earplugs in, put padding on you, wear padding and all that. I think you'd be just totally bloody crackers to do a thing like that, because, you know, it's unpredictable and you might get injured. <laughs> and Well, that's just stupid. Uh, yeah, I could do the same thing with the Back to the Future flame because I've done it before with the uh, the bigger JBLs subs and the candle flame blew out once it's rehearsed and you know it's under certain conditions. Don't just put it up there and do it and then you know cause seen those IMAX videos with them blowing all their candles out and bloody hell the damn things couldn't even blow all the candles out at the same time. So that's just due to the physics of the <laughs> the frequency and it moving like so and generating air flow inside the in, inside the cabinet and then it coming out of the um, the port like like your mouth like <laughs> blow your candles out or sort of thing you know it's nothing that's, that's not nothing to be embarrassed about it's just something for fun for Christ's sakes um, but you gotta remember that you know the the um, excursion and the stress you're gonna put on uh, the driver 
I don't I don't see the logic in the video showing a, an ex, a sub you know okay if it can do that you don't have to play at that level all the time crikey most people have probably got their subs like way way high here i've got to basically reduce the levels of everything else in the room because that's physically small um i mean if i were to put a voltmeter on it um yeah, I might do that in another video. Do a, do a one with the voltmeter candle still uh, on there. Um, and let's just go to um, let's go back to chapter um, 13 on side A. Um, Everything's still set at the same levels. So it should blow out. And they had the, the level there at 11 but that has got nothing to do with the level that you might have in your home on your uh, den or whatever blah 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 everything's different here um yeah i don't want to hear any more crap about you know i'm sure a bose sub bass uh, speaker could do the same thing um so what am i going to do now um Do this test again with the uh, the the forty seven eighty twos professional TCB subs. And a little bit difficult actually because of the uh, the way the uh, um, yeah um, a little bit difficult. Not impossible, but it's a little bit difficult. So I've got to get the angle of the uh, tripod in position. And make sure the candle and the flame is not going to melt the TV <laughs> because it is made of plastic. <laughs> plastic. <laughs> plastic. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'd have to make sure, you know, the flame is, you know, clear. Uh, and then it's just a case of doing rehearsal because, you know, uh, if I could easily get to the um, inside, which I can, but the only access is from the back, and I've got to move the TV out of the way. I've got to push it right over. And I've got to bring each and one of the uh, t the larger TCB subs out, turn them around, and then I've got to unscrew all the screws that hold the back on each of the uh, two chambers on the back of it. And then get something inside the stuff inside one of the ports, and then possibly to change the frequency response, um, as well as other things, you know, sensitivity and blah blah. I'm not going to do that. Absolutely not. Not if someone wanted me to do that. There is no way I'm doing that because it is too much involved. It's not as easy as just stuffing up the ports you know if they didn't have those metal grills on the front of the things yeah but it's it's fitting something over the front of it um and that's not impossible that's not impossible because all we got here is i uh, barely see it it's not enough light here to see um it's too dark I mean, you can see my hand but I can't see the in here the grill that's the cab right the um looking at how it is there how would i uh stuff that up or how would i hmm 
blue tack comes to mind. All I need is a few packets, well I need quite a few packets actually, uh, and then just take it out as a hole, and then stick it, and then get another one and stick it and another one. So it'd probably take uh, maybe a few packets to stick over um, each one of the, the, the mm, maybe the smaller ports because they're, they're two large main ones and then they're four smaller uh, ports. Here it's, um, yeah, this, that's easy, just commonly uh, you just stuff up two ports and then you get a little bit more lower frequency. Um, well, that one, well, that, that does nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Upload this, now I'll do another vid with maybe uh, just checking it with the voltmeter but more things change and more they stay the same it'd be no more different than when I tested uh, with the, the voltmeter connected up to the amplifier that was driving the base shakers underneath the seat um, you know and just sort of like feeling the frequency looking at the voltage and thinking huh, is that all the amount of voltage I need just to do that blindly <laughs> that's not a lot um, and you'd be surprised, uh, less is more. Um, yeah, it's uh, not bad. It's nicely intact, that. Um, do everything inside. It needs a few little fixings around the side due to, you know, the, year, uh, the years it's, you know. So I'm going to get some uh, liquid nails in place. I'll have to get some clamp. One of those clamps you put around it and then tighten it up. Um, uh, and just do a few little, but other than that, yeah. A few little scratches. I think when I sold mine uh, back in the early 90s, um, yeah, I had a few little scratches on it. I think, you know, everything was still... And that one's been well kept. Everything gets scratches. We get scratches. We get scars, you know. So, hey. Enough of that shit. I don't want to add to, you know I mean? This. I could scratch that if I want to. I could do that really hard with just my finger. And then that TV's kaput. Because it's made of plastic. Yeah. So, when you buy a gigantic you know uh, 60 grand or 90 grand uh, 200 inch bloody flat screen but still remember it's made of plastic cheap 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 plastic and it will break it's not like a CRT where you need a sledgehammer and then one bang on the you know on the TV just one bang like that the TV's still intact, but it's gonna. But that boom is gonna resonate inside the blimmin' tube. But you'd have to give it a like, like that to really. But that would be stupid because it's it's under pressure and um, it's glass and well, that's just stupid if you're not protecting yourself because you don't know what unpredictably could happen. But yeah. That's what it takes to break a CRT. And all you could do with a pla plastic TV is your finger. That's why mostly you see more, you probably see more flat screens down a tip today, more than probably CRTs uh, during their lifetime. Because they were robust. <laughs> anyway, enough of a rant.